that's honey. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Tuna Status, the podcast. We have a very, very special guest here, Miss... Linda Lucia. And she came all the way out from the West Coast to see us, come chill with us, kick with us, and uh, we're going to get into it and just talk about some of her journey and her lifestyle and things that she's gone through and drop some gems, hopefully, for other people to uh, follow pursuit. So <laughs> tell it. us, how did you get into the modeling aspect first? Oh, boy. Um... This was, I don't even remember the year. I was still working at the nursing home Mm -hmm. uh, in the kitchen. Okay. So that was probably 2010. Okay. And my coworker had a friend that just got a camera and wanted to do photography. And Mm -hmm. she was like, Linda, can you help my friend out? And I was like, no, I'm not a model. Like, (laughs) that's weird. I didn't like doing photos, like, with Mm -hmm. my family. I didn't like doing my high school photos, my prom photos. Forget about it. Mm -hmm. Sucked it up, helped a friend out, loved the photos. She posted them on Facebook when Facebook was, like, way, like, this is a thing. Yeah. (laughs) And other photographers started commenting and reaching out, Mm -hmm. and I just started slowly dabbling into it for free, Mm -hmm. and then when I started getting more requests, I started, like, charging, like, pennies yeah <laughs> like yeah. pennies like at least pay for my gas and yeah. then that went from paying for my gas to okay it's gonna be two hours and it's gonna be x amount oh you want me to drive how far yeah. oh okay so how um, did you land into that decision that hey you have to start charging like was it a comfortable thing for you like okay you know what i gotta make some of this money back um how did you come to that realization well my friend told me i needed to yeah. so i was like okay I guess. So, (laughs) you know, because I was confiding in her. I was Mm -hmm. like the one that was the first person I ever shot with, Liz. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, I don't know like what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. She's Mm -hmm. like, just throw this out there. Throw this out there. See if it sticks. It's never going to hurt. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, So then when certain photographers, they had like a different look that they wanted to add to their portfolio. If they're not providing like the studio um, or the garments of clothing, Mm -hmm. like that's something that I would have to invest in. So why would I... Why would I want to pay for that? You know, it's your vision that you want executed. So Mm -hmm. why would I pay for that? You know? Gems. See? Gems already. (laughs) So I will say, so I started doing that in 2009. We're now in 2024. I've never once paid for a photo shoot besides my calendar project. Okay. Okay. So you spoke on some of the comfort level of getting into shooting and mm-hmm. working with people how was it you know what were some of the bumps and roads you faced trusting photographers with their vision um and your content pretty much for me i feel i'm very different than a lot of other girls that i've run into mm-hmm. meaning i have three older brothers so yeah. i'm a little bit like okay straight to the point i'm not mm-hmm. like oh like maybe like no what do you want you yeah. know, like what, it, what, let's get to the punch here. But mm-hmm. I also worked in corporate. I did sales for a long time. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's, it's a business transaction. I need to know what am I getting myself into? What's the vision? Like, what do I need to do? What do you need for me? What are the deliverables mm-hmm. to let me do what I need to do freely and be comfortable? Okay. You know, so for me, I really just focused on like the business aspect of it. So then that way, when it's time to show up to get to the shoot and have fun, I can actually have fun because I know what I need to get done. Okay. You know, because I am a very like flowy type of person. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of photographers, they appreciated that. Uh, There was this one specific photographer that I don't even know his name at this point, Mm. um, but he really thought that I was stupid. And... And he fucked up. He absolutely he did. Up. Yeah, he had, a, he had a mirror positioned in a very interesting way in his changing room uh, that he could see into the fitting room of when I was about to change into the first outfit. I That's broke wild. that mirror so fast and got in his face and I left and I kept the money. That's wild. But, but that was the it. only instance I've ever, ever had. Okay. Um, referrals are huge, mm-hmm. I think. So if you've never worked with a photographer before ask you know for references go with some have someone come with you so Mm -hmm. you feel comfortable um for me it was 
when I started working with Chris Hajar, mm -hmm. you know, he does a lot of like nude photography, like not exposed. Mm -hmm. He will if you want to, okay. but it was a lot of implied and I just mm -hmm. loved the artistic value that he okay. brought to each of the photos. Um, playing with shadows was really fun. Yeah. Really, really fun. <laughs> and those, those images are actually one of my favorite yeah. images. You can't see anything, but I'm like, dang, the woman's body. Yeah. We're fire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I loved it. it. I believe it. That's what's up. So yeah. bridging the gap, how did you get into the automotive scene with the modeling? <laughs> okay. Well, coming from New Hampshire, mm -hmm. um, hmm, it's not a lot of growth there, yeah. I feel. Um, so I ended up, my friend Sal, you know Sal, mm -hmm. he mentioned that uh, Summer Sendoff, Tony, needed mm -hmm. um, like a brand ambassador or a model for his booth. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I've done brand ambassador stuff before, so like okay. I could totally do that. But I didn't classify myself really as a model mm -hmm. at that point, even though I was still accepting like paid photo shoots. Okay. I just didn't put two and two together. And I never even knew there was a car community outside of a dealership. No shit. I grew up in a baseball house. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All I knew was baseball growing mm -hmm. up. So I just didn't know what I was walking into. Mm -hmm. And when I pulled up to the event, it was actually Electro's Import Evolution, like mm -hmm. outdoor event okay. that I was with Tony with Summer Sundoff. Mm -hmm. And I just had so much fun. And yeah. I was just trying to figure out like, what am I doing? I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, just go take pictures. I'm like, okay, bye. You know, and then I would just walk around and I'm like asking people, hey, like, is this your mm -hmm. car? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, can I get a photo? Yeah. You know, but it would be on their phone. All right. You know, All so right. then I ended up meeting um, Electro because it was his event. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I, all I said was like, yo, this is a dope event. Like, yeah. this is amazing. Do you have another one? And he goes, yeah, and told me about it. And then boom, I showed up at that one. Okay, okay. So what were some of the harder parts? I mean, navigating through the car scene, what's it like working a full day outside and not the most comfortable weather? <laughs> what's some of the challenges with that? It really stinks as a female. Y'all yeah. don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all don't Cause get it. We get to walk around basketball shorts, chilling, say it's hot outside, whatever, but as a model, you're carrying yourself a certain way mm -hmm. and can't be sweaty. The it's hair hard. can't be just... Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine. It's different. People yeah. could literally pour a bucket of ice water on you or, mm -hmm. you know, like they did to uh, Tony at yeah. his event and then you're, you're good, mm -hmm. you know, like it'll dry off. It's not a problem. Yeah. Can't be doing that to the models. Can't be doing it to a female. You better yeah. never do that to me. No. Um, no. <laughs> but it, it's, it does get exhausting, yeah. um, especially when you're doing like an outdoor event. Mm -hmm. We have to wear makeup. We have to worry about our hair, you mm -hmm. know, like our outfit. It would if, if it gets messed up somehow, you know, like we, mm -hmm. one time I sat on something and I'm like, oh crap, you know, like, <laughs> dang, <laughs> now my shorts are all ruined. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, what I say to most girls is like, when you're just get ready for a photo shoot, mm -hmm. if you're going to a photo shoot, you're going to have at least two extra outfits. Okay. You're going to have your makeup. So that way you could do touch-ups in the bathroom mm -hmm. or I just do touch-ups in anybody's car at that point. I have don't you care. Have you been solo at that point or have you had somebody come by with you and handle makeup and hair? No, no? I oh. always, I always, for every show, mm -hmm. I always do makeup and hair myself. Much I don't respect, need, I, I personally don't feel that it's like that big of mm -hmm. like, a thing that yeah. I need to have a makeup artist to do yeah. my makeup for a car show, especially an outdoor one. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm going to be sweating. Yeah. What's the point? I'm going to yeah. spend money mm -hmm. and waste low key waste a makeup artist time yeah. because it's just going to drip down my face. Okay. You know, so I've seen you, you're active from the beginning of the show to the very end. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, this girl's nuts. This is as crazy. Soon as I pull up, yeah. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Psychopath, let's go. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Locked in, let's yeah. go. <laughs> so let's talk about networking and opportunities um, throughout the car scene. Mm. What has the car scene kind of done for you with the modeling as far as networking and opportunities? A lot, honestly. Right. Um, networking, see, networking is cool mm -hmm. but creating relationships is so much better okay you know a lot of people say oh it was just a networking event la, la, la. like i met simple I've, people like no i'm those. trying to make new friends <laughs> yeah like that's my thing it's mm -hmm. a lot of people i feel utilize networking as like okay well what can i get from you and what can i give you type mm -hmm. of thing and it's like i don't necessarily need something from you yeah you know mm -hmm. friendship 
some knowledge will come of it, Mm -hmm. I would assume. You know what I mean? Like with every friendship, there should be that even exchange, Mm -hmm. right? So for me, I just kind of took it as like a learn, like more of a learning tool. Yeah. Like there's so many vendors at these events, like, wait, how did they get started in business? How long have they been open? Mm -hmm. You know, like, am I talking to the owner? Am I talking, who am I talking to? You know, so you just kind of ask questions, Mm -hmm. you know, and it could be, simple little questions but for me it was for all of the events that I have worked I just wanted to know the owner and I just wanted to kind of know like how does it work yeah you know and how can I bring value to your show Mm -hmm. and what I've realized over the past couple of years is that it's a it's like a um it's a triple win Mm -hmm. right so I go to a show I meet you you have your car there Mm you're going to potentially want me to model with your car, yeah. right? You post the vehicle on your Instagram, mm-hmm. right? You're going to tag me, yeah. boom, I win. Mm-hmm. You're going to tag the event, boom, the event yeah. wins. And then you're posting on your page, so you win. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. a it's a three-tiered like tiered thing, okay. you know? Okay. like, And I love that. It's mm-hmm. making everyone happy. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I have fun with it, and it's not like... Stupid little poses. Like if I, I have my little signature pose, I'll be like, come here, let me show you. And uh-huh. it's like so not appropriate for men, but it's so funny. <laughs> I've, I've literally had a lot of guys be like, I could do it better than you. And I was like, all right, go ahead, show me. No shit. And then let's get a photo okay, of it. Okay, but has anybody done it better than you? Um, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we talk about networking. A lot yep. of people especially models that are coming into this space or even just anybody who's watching the pod and wants to get into the field of just, uh, even as a photographer, Mm -hmm. what would you feel some of the, I guess, taking the networking from it, but building relationships, Mm -hmm. I'll say in two parts. What are some of the do's and don'ts for you going out there? Mm -hmm. And then the second part I'll ask afterwards, which is what are some of the do's and don'ts for somebody approaching you? Oh, okay. So first let's talk about the do's and don'ts with, from your side of things that you've learned over the years, like, oh, I tried this and this didn't work at all. It was a bad idea. Um, okay. For me, I would say the best thing that you can do, show up. Yeah. So if you're a model trying to get into the scene or you're a photographer trying to get in the scene, mm-hmm. just show up. Buy a ticket. Show up. You yeah. know, like, invest in the event that you want the event to invest in you. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, that's to me, common courtesy, unless you're invited, you mm-hmm. know, unless you've met, you know, the owner previously, or there's someone there that maybe has another ticket, or mm-hmm. they've, you know, seen your social media, and they invite you, and mm-hmm. they comp your ticket, then yeah. okay, show up. Um, I feel like showing face does so much for your brand, and for just the culture, and just like, showing that you just support is mm-hmm. huge, is huge. Whether you post anything or not, but you're just there, yeah. you know, creating relationships. Yeah. Um, I would say, like, never assume that you're too good mm. um, and that you're better than someone else. Have you witnessed that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I have witnessed many models, which I obviously will not name names, but mm-hmm. I've witnessed many models that, you know, they're entitled. You know, they think mm-hmm. that they're better looking than other models or that they can deliver more or they can they can do x y and z or they just overcharge up the wazoo and you're like what are you doing That's you know um and for me i'm just like mm, all right i don't maneuver that way but mm-hmm. that, if that works for you girl go ahead do your yeah. thing um but i just think like you just got to be true to yourself show up and if you have the passion for modeling you have the passion for photography mm-hmm. just continue to showcase that and perfect your skill Mm. eventually someone's gonna notice it yeah definitely eventually especially with consistency that's a big thing i feel like a lot of people would it separates the people who actually make it and the people who just kind of find excuses is is really consistency because i've seen a lot of people i thought would be up here Mm -hmm. and they had that big push and then they just tapered off Mm -hmm. and it's just you see them it's like what happened Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You can't be consistent if you don't believe in yourself. True. And if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? Very true. Very true. 
Except for my mom, by default. <laughs> she pushes. She pushes. Yeah, she should. Yeah, yeah. As Good parents, for her. we should. So, Come on, <laughs> now let's speak about as far as approaching you and approaching other models. What are some of the do's and don'ts for like photographers and prevent pro, prevent well event promoters? Um, what's some of the stuff that you've seen that you're just like, you know what? Nah, I'm good. Um, it's kind of hard to say because I've heard that I have like an intimidation factor. So people don't really approach me. You're a bully? What? <laughs> With, no, that's the thing. I'm not a bully. And mm -hmm. it like drives me nuts. But I mm -hmm. guess I have like RBF, I guess. I don't oh know. Oh my gosh. Or like just the way that like I maneuver people. Mm -hmm. Like I've gotten so many messages like after Import Evolution. I don't, I don't understand it because I am there to literally just hug everybody. Yeah. You know? And then they were like, there's so many messages of like, oh, I was like really, really shy to like mm -hmm. say hi to you. And then of course I get feisty and I was like, I'm there for you. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, oh, I'm not trying to be mean. But so like, go say hi and don't be, don't be weird though. Yeah, don't be weird. Like, <laughs> you know, like that's what I'm there for. Yeah. And like when I see someone you know, like kind of like eyeing the booth and you see that they want to come up, then mm -hmm. I literally will like grab them. And yeah. I'm like, come on, we locked eyes. Mm -hmm. We're going to hug it out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, but I think pro some promoters, I feel don't respect models and don't feel that they should pay for models if they're mm -hmm. not getting an ROI. Um, and I, I understand that to a certain degree. I yeah. think that it depends on the caliber of the model. Um, what, what she can really deliver for mm -hmm. the show. So I remember that from the outside looking in, a lot of people want to see that model. So I remember you guys used to say, hey, use this promo code or use this yeah. or whatever. And I remember everybody used to be excited. And just, mm -hmm. They would use it because not yeah. only were they getting a discount, but it was just like they wanted to see you guys. Exactly. So. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. that definitely does work. Um, when it comes to photographers, I mean, one thing that I don't like at shows mm -hmm. is a photographer will, you know, want you to take a photo with a certain car, which mm -hmm. that's not the problem, but they will literally keep you at that car as if it is a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. I love you to pieces. I respect your craft. I'm not there to do a full photo shoot mm -hmm. with this vehicle for you to get 200 photos. Yeah. Now you're going to have to pay me. Yeah. So I, yeah. if a photographer wants to take a picture of me with a car, I cap it to five. Okay. That's my cap. Because outside of that, I've built a name for myself. I'm exactly. hired by the show. I have my own booth. You know, I have other responsibilities. I want that photographer to get their photo, mm -hmm. but they also need to be very respectful of my time and exactly. the reason why I'm at that show. And we both know they're going to milk the shit out of it. They're if they want to, yeah. yeah. I mean, you but. know, and I'm open to like, you know, like envious. I absolutely love envious. And mm -hmm. I will literally walk car by car mm -hmm. by car by car with mm -hmm. them you know, and get them their pictures, Yeah. you know? So it's just a respect factor. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of photographers also, they just have to circle back. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, Lena, I really want to get a photo. Um, you know, like, can we do it like now? And I'm mm -hmm. like, I can't right now, yeah. you know? Like I have other people at my booth, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's photographers that like are really eager. Mm -hmm. They just kind of need to read the room sometimes. Okay. Yeah. But I haven't ran into that at every show. Mm -hmm. It's just... Yeah. You know. Yeah. Every it's a hit or a miss. You just never, you just never really know. Mm -hmm. And every show is really different, though. Every show. Some things get per re repetitive after mm -hmm. you've done it for so long, but mm -hmm. every show, especially now with this newer generation, it's There's it's so different. Many shows. Yeah, it's so like, many shows. What? How do you feel about the show scene now? Now that we're speaking about it, there's a lot to cover. There's a lot from the East Coast. I can't even imagine the West Coast where they have the constant weather. Like it is just. <laughs> I can't imagine keeping it's a, up with it all. Yeah, the West Coast is a completely different beast, just yeah. even weather-wise. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I've been doing this for quite some time with, I mean, with the huge pause mm -hmm. of COVID. Um, but I love the East Coast shows. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I'm from here. Yeah. Like, I love yeah. my East Coast shows. The vibe yeah. is just so different. But then when you go to the West Coast, mm. the vibe is so different. It's chill oh the east coast yeah y'all are competitive yeah super competitive <laughs> y'all get really pissed off if it's not your car that's winning yeah. like calm down mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's still about the culture maybe learn something from mm -hmm. the person that won maybe yeah. they have a certain part 
Mm-hmm. That would probably be better on your car. Who knows? We don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's something. There's something. Super competitive. I have yet to run into, please don't hate me, East Coast, sore losers on the West Coast when it comes to Mm -hmm. the awards. Really? Yeah. I haven't. I haven't seen it. I literally haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. And I'm literally giving the awards. (laughs) It's very interesting. So there's some... There's some East Coast areas that they're, they are all hell bent. If yeah. they don't win, the show is crap. This is terrible. Oh, I yeah, get all this. And I'm like, I get it. it. I get that you put so much money into your mm-hmm. vehicle, but it just wasn't your time. So West Coast, how is it? Explain to me that moment when you was like, you know what? I'm going to chalk it up. I'm going to move out there and I'm going to make it work. <laughs> How was that decision? Like, Gosh. Well. Because I know you had to, because that's not an easy thing to do. No. And it's hard to uproot your life from your friends, your family, mm-hmm. and everything like that. Like, mm-hmm. how, how stressful was that? So it was, it was a lot um, at that time. So I ended up going out to San Diego in 2019. Mm-hmm. And I ended up staying with my brother. Prior to that, um, I was I kept flying out to LA and visiting my creator friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was actually working for a solar company, uh, and they had a branch out in Yorba Linda, California. Mm-hmm. So I was like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> so I ended up doing road trips mm-hmm. in my Honda Civic. No uh, shit. <laughs> good, old, good old Betsy. Yeah. Um, and I would do road trip after road trip, mm-hmm. um, cross country road trips, solo dolo, 300 bucks or less in my bank account because we were struggle blessing. Yeah. Um, and I just kept doing it over and over again. And then my brother was like, hey, I've never like had the opportunity to support you and what you wanted to do. Like, mm-hmm. I know that you want to live out in LA, uh, but I'm in San Diego. Like, oh, come, come here. Mm-hmm. Well, I couldn't afford my rent in New Hampshire, so I ended up getting evicted. Okay. Uh, so it actually worked out perfect timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was road tripping back from San Diego mm-hmm. to an eviction notice on my That's on hard. my apartment, That's and hard. my mom was like, "I'm not helping you," and I'm like, "You don't have to." Yeah. So I like sold as much stuff as possible. Mm-hmm. I like did like a free sale. I'm like, just take it. I'm moving. Packed yeah. up all my stuff. Went out to San Diego. Uh, was I hated it. I yeah. absolutely hated San Diego. Yeah? I hated it. Wow. Because when you're broke, you can't do anything. I know. And I heard San Diego is not cheap. Like, no. Yeah. It is not. It's beautiful. Yeah. But, like, no. You have to have... You got to figure something out. Yeah. So, it took me a little bit to kind of figure out, like, what I wanted to do. So, I started working with chemical guys. I just mm-hmm. I just walked in there and I was like, I need to, like, work with you guys somehow. Mm-hmm. And they had meat. So, they would pay me to show up to the meat. And it okay. wasn't even, like, a lot. It was, like, $100. Yeah. But I was like, shh. That's hundred dollars. That's a hundred bucks. Like, yeah. yes, I'm killing this. You know, mm-hmm. and they do this every Sunday. You know, that's oh, four hundred dollars. Exactly. You know, so then I was like, how can I, you know, do this? So I booked a, a couple photo shoots, uh, which which helped. But then I ended up having to get a serving job. Yeah. Um, and then it just didn't pan out. Um, mm-hmm. at my brother's house. So I ended up like against my will, mm-hmm. coming back to New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I stayed with my sister. Uh, over the winter months, I got two jobs. I was yeah. working at Ulta and 110 Grill okay. uh, hosting, and I just stacked my money. He's on your grind. I, I just sta- I, I didn't spend it. anything. I don't care. Mm-hmm. You want to do what? No. Yeah. If, if, if you're paying for it, okay. But yeah. I'm not spending yeah. a dime. I need to get the hell out of here. I don't want to live in New Hampshire anymore mm-hmm. because I was in San Diego for a couple of months. And yeah. what? It was amazing. So I ended up stacking up enough money, um, and then I figured out a living situation in LA Mm -hmm. and I just, again, packed up my car, drove out there, got there Mm -hmm. on Valentine's Day, 2020. In the same car? My Betsy. Yo, shout out to Betsy for being a real one. Yeah. She's still around. I just, <laughs> I just registered her. Well, she too. held you down, yo. She's, oh my, and nothing, she. That's a forever car. Nothing has happened to her yeah. besides the, the, I mean, the muffler yeah. fell off, mm-hmm. but easy fix. Yeah. That's crazy. Literally. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Oh, the starter. Yeah. But that's it. That, that's She's... Get yourself on a Civic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's up. That's yeah. What's up. It was a lot, though. It was a lot because I'm so close to my family. Mm-hmm. But it just felt like I need change. I yeah. need to get the hell out of here. I don't like the snow. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not making money in the car scene mm-hmm. in the snow. 
you know, like yeah. photographers aren't going to really pay for bookings in the snow. And I, I wasn't really working at that point. I left yeah. corporate. I was in between jobs. I was yeah. literally trying to figure it out. Yeah. But all of my friends on social media had millions of followers. They're making thousands of dollars with brand deals. They're getting their hostings. They're, they got their own merchandise. They're, they have so many other things. Mm -hmm. I needed to be surrounded by that. Yeah. So that's, where, that's what I did. That's what's up. Yeah. You took a lot of moments that could have broken you. Mm -hmm. You could have said, okay, I'm going back to work and yeah. do this nine to five. And I can really respect the hustle. And it was hard. It was hard. Real. It was hard. Cause and that's the thing that a lot of people don't see and they don't mm -hmm. understand, which is why I try to introduce these. Because they see the followers, the glitz, the glam, and the lifestyle that's presented in front of the camera. But they don't know mm -hmm. that this is hard. It's a it's highlight a, reel. Yeah. Social media is a highlight reel. Yeah. Unless... You're one of those very transparent creators. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm transparent to a degree yeah. on my social media. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all don't need to know everything yeah. that I do mm -hmm. um, and when I do it. But mm -hmm. I will eventually, you know, like I've done a life update on mm -hmm. my YouTube channel because last year was a very, very challenging year for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and years prior to that, like when my business partner Leo passed away, that was yeah. literally, it's still very difficult to talk about. Um, but we push through it, yeah. right? You know, like we all go through things, mm. but we don't all need to do it by ourselves. That's true. You know? That's true. So. And that's when real friends and real family come around. Whew. Yeah. Amen shout to out, all of shout them. Out to <laughs> Love you. <laughs> so let's talk about family. How's yeah. family life for you? How's everything going on with that? Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah? Family's good. Wait, 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 wait. We got to say, and y'all better say happy birthday. Oh. If you haven't yet. But happy belated birthday. Thank you, thank you. How's family life? And family's, family's good. I mean, all of my family, with exception, my brother is in San Diego. My eldest brother is in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of my family is in New Hampshire, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, same thing. I mean, they're all working, raising yeah. their kids, Doing calling me and giving me a hard time. <laughs> um, yeah, they're super supportive. I think... Mm -hmm. Me moving away, me and my brothers, we've always been really close, mm -hmm. but my brothers are, um, hmm, how do I say this? Sour Patch Kids. Oh, okay. You know, so okay. they're tough, but like they're big teddy bears. Mm -hmm. And me moving away, I think really made them appreciate me a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And they also have daughters. Okay. So like they're girl dads. they're being yeah they're yeah. really really i know good. her vibe i love it I love they're it. really <laughs> good girl dads my brothers and it's so awkward to see because yeah. i'm just like ew i've known you your whole life yeah oh my god you're gosh. now a dad yeah oh yeah you know but you're doing such a good job i was like wait a minute all right like i guess <laughs> you're to cool your brothers. like you grew up a little bit mm -hmm. you know so like seeing and then just seeing how you know my nieces behave and i'm like that's interesting because you're your father definitely didn't teach you that mm -hmm. because he doesn't even act like that. That's where'd you get that from? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's so funny. It, it, like, it's just so really, it's really, really funny to see, but no, I'm really, really close to my family. Like, you know, now my brothers actually FaceTime me mm -hmm. and that's been like a year, like years and years in the making, yeah. you know, like, that's a or they wouldn't answer my phone calls. Cause they just were like, I got a wife. We don't care. You know, like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. you know, like you're five minutes down the road. Mm -hmm. Well now I'm literally like over a five hour flight. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to answer my damn call mm -hmm. and they do, that's you know? So it's definitely, you know, it's crazy. Me moving away has actually made our relationship stronger okay. than me being local. Mm. It's really, really fascinating. Yeah, it'll do that though. It'll What's do that, that saying? Um, distance makes the heart grow fonder. Oh gosh, yeah, that's Bleh. true. Whatever, that's you true. believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is true though. For some friendships, some relationships, yeah. some family members. So yeah. I believe it. So, I mean, what is Linda up to now? No oh, boy. Now. Now. Um, well, I'm on tour. Mm -hmm. I'm calling it the possibilities are endless tour, even mm. though it's not like, mm. you know, organized by me, Yeah. but I have, um, I got my BMW last year. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to put my big girl pants on. I want a Beamer. Yeah. Really don't ask me why. I don't know, but I got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wanted a Beamer. And then I ended up just getting it wrapped, put some wheels on it, got some mm. cool tires, um, tinted it out. Now I'm going to be lowering it. Okay. Kind of want to do an underglow just because I'm obsessed with orange. But people like, Lena, that's so tacky. Well, whatever. It's my car. It's your car. I Fuck don't it. care. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
And so this year I was, so last year I really didn't do many shows. I really just like, I took a year off from mm -hmm. it. I was exhausted. I really just wanted to focus on the rally that I was doing um, and then just really work on social media um, and working with Rich Rebuilds. Mm -hmm. So that's always been fun. Um, so then this year I was like, all right, we're going to do maybe one show a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. no absolutely not. It's no. soon. I'm about to say. It's soon <laughs> I'm about to as, say. You know, I called Ranger from mm -hmm. Elite Tuner. I called, um, you know, Electro. I mean, he has his big show mm -hmm. a year. Um, Canada show I have, mm -hmm. and then you know, uh, Jay and Sean from um, yeah. Tuner Evo. I literally, as soon as you know, I started just like, hey, mm -hmm. send me your schedule. Hey, you know, Jeff from um, Official Race Wars, like, yep. send me your schedule. Like, <laughs> send me your schedule. Yeah. You know, and then networking with certain people in California, you know, Callie Creaming. I absolutely love that show. Like, they mm. are phenomenal. It's two brothers that yeah. run the show. They're just, like, laid back, super chill, but let's get shit done type of guys. Yeah. And, I like, their shows are massive. Like, they are massive shows. And they're like, they're crushing it. And mm -hmm. I love that. And I just said, hey, I'm friends with so-and-so, heard about your show. Mm -hmm. Like, I would love to set up. Like, what do we need to do? And I just asked certain questions and they were like, yeah, come on. Yeah. You know, so they kind of like took me under their little wing and I was like, <laughs> I'm really from the East Coast. Yeah. You know, so this year I'm really focused on my, my tour, you yeah. know, and just kind of tapping into different markets and mm -hmm. also like reviving other yeah. markets as well. Like, haven't been to Chicago in mm -hmm years and yeah. i love chicago so yeah. i'm so happy that te is going back this year i'm yeah. so so and they booked me for it so yeah, let's go so who do you think has better food since you've been all over chicago boston or on the west coast oh okay we're going there yeah okay yeah um mm. so chinese food new england yeah. hands down Absolutely. Pizza, really? yeah. Chinese food isn't For, that great in, on the West Coast? They don't have boneless spare ribs, so no. Ew, what? Why do not I have boneless? I don't, I don't. I gotta have boneless spare ribs. Call I them. I don't know. I can't, I don't know. I do not know. That's but right. every single time I go to a Is different Is it called train, something else or they just don't have it? They do not have it. They have the ribs, but yeah. I want the boneless spare ribs. Yeah. They don't have that. An extra. Don't not, be cheap. And I don't know. want the fatty pieces. I want the real good pieces. That's crazy. So that's where I'm like, mm, you're cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, East Coast, definitely best soups, best espresso martinis. Mm. Mm. Um, sorry, I love those. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would, I would say like for the healthier, clean eating, mm. California has that nailed. Okay, what about I, Mexican food? Mexican food, ooh. Or Spanish food, I guess, if you want to. Okay, so... Because it's different. I feel like Spanish food different. and Mexican food is different. Because you can go to Dominican restaurant so, and it, it's different. It definitely does. So, I have yet to really find a good, like, Dominican or Puerto Rican restaurant in California. Mm -hmm. Also, haven't really been looking for it because mm -hmm. I am trying to eat healthier. Please don't come for me. Please don't come <laughs> for me. Okay? Please don't come for me. Um, but there's so many good Dominican places. Yeah over here yeah. like east coast yeah. yeah i love the food on the east coast i just do okay, okay. but cleaner See, cleaner like eating well, we don't need cleaner more eating. options on, listen double it up yo extra uh, in california yes mexican food honestly i'm getting there it's it's very heavily saturated <laughs> in, in california and also over here yeah. like me just coming back here for a week it's there's been over. like seven it's, new mexican restaurants in just mexican southern new hampshire and, and i'm like Korean restaurants are really just blowing up in really? Austin. It's crazy. I was just in Austin and every like 10 feet there's like a Korean restaurant. Ooh, we love some so Korean far barbecue. In Austin. Yeah, yeah, barbecue. Oh my God. Yo, this is I fire. got put on to that actually in California and oh, I'm shit. like, oh my God, this You've is been missing out. You've it's been missing so out. damn good. I, yeah, yeah, I know. And then ramen. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. This is going to make me sound real stupid, but... I was not used to like having like a ramen place mm -hmm. over here. I'm thinking ramen noodles. Like top ramen? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was, so one of my girls was like, oh, I just want to go get ramen. And I was like, yeah. at the grocery store? She go, I was like, I want to go out to eat. She yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she actually put me on to a, a, a ramen place yeah. in LA. And I was like, what the heck is it? I didn't, I never knew it was a thing. Mm. Because I'm so used to. Top ramen. 
Yes. Yeah. But I'm yeah. so used to like, okay, we want to go out to eat. We're going to go to 110 Grill. We're going to mm-hmm. grab pizza. We're going to grab Chinese food. Like yeah. that's never really been, mm. I, it, there, I don't know if there's a ramen place in New Hampshire. No. And if there is, I'm going to now find it yeah. and try it. Yeah. Because I'm obsessed. So if y'all know a spot. Comment. Yeah. Let it know. Please. Let Sign it know. my DM. Send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Tag me. <laughs> so now I see you more active as far as the YouTube space. Yeah. What are you liking more? The YouTube content or the Instagram content? See, that's tough. Um, Instagram loves to mess with creators mm. and really mess up the algorithm, like uh-huh. really, really, really bad. I almost I was... jumped ship, but Vero isn't strong enough. <sighs> Vero is as, as much as I Instagram gets on my fucking nerves. I, it's just what else really. It's is tough. There? It yeah. is definitely tough. I was shadow banned for a very long time. Mm. Couldn't even figure out why I was shadow banned mm. because I wasn't posting much. Yeah. Um, I've definitely know why people follow me when I post certain things. Mm -hmm. Still love you guys. Um, but every platform is a different version of me. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to answer that question. Okay. You know, like YouTube, it's far more personal, Mm -hmm. um, where I can do my daily vlogs. I see the raw side of you with YouTube. It's just like, okay, this is really Mm -hmm. her when she wants to do something, when she doesn't want to do something. When she's hungry. Mm, when she's oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, if Electro ever watches this. Yeah. He so, knows how I get a hangry. So I've seen, <laughs> I've seen it. And then I can see some of the personal stuff within the stories. But yeah. it's more the branding of Linda. Yeah. And it's Instagram. like Instagram. I mean, I have a yeah. lot of sponsors. Mm. But I'm a very, like, I do not promote something I don't mm-hmm. actively believe in. Mm-hmm. I am not one of those people. You're yeah. not going to, you are not going to ever see me promote mm. weed, for example. Yeah. I don't smoke. Yeah. Why am I going to do that? And if your followers know you, they're going to be like, like why is I'm not going to do yeah. that unless it's like my buddy has a dispensary mm-hmm. and I'm like, hey, I know you guys are potheads. I'm not, but mm-hmm. my buddy's got a shop. You get what I'm saying? So I would finagle it kind of that way. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's just not something I actively do. So I don't, I don't promote stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But for me, when it comes to like branding, I really don't think I'm good at it, to be Mm -hmm. honest. It's just, I see something, I like it. I have an idea. Let's film it. Let's edit it. Let's post it. Mm -hmm. Like I, that's just the tunnel that I go down. Mm -hmm. And if people, if people like it, people like it. If they don't, then whatever. I still like it. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's yeah, it's that's really, the, I don't know, it's really It allows you to stay true to yourself, too. Mm-hmm. You feel like you're not stretched thin. You feel like you're not fake. It's, it's easier to feel, I guess, or easier to create when you're actually passionate about something. A thousand percent. Because but... when I get it, some things you might have to do and it's kind of reaching, but mm-hmm. you're also staying true to yourself, too. Mm-hmm. And people can respect your brand at the end of the day because you're consistent within your brand. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I definitely, I do stretch myself very thin. Mm-hmm. Because I forget that I'm human yeah. and that there's only 24 hours in mm-hmm. a day, which you can do a lot in 24 yeah. hours. But what I have on my to-do list cannot be done in 24 yeah. hours. So I do have to pace myself. I don't have a team behind me mm-hmm. anymore. Um, so it, it is all me and like my connection. Sometimes I'm pulling favors if it's like a graphic type of thing. Like yeah. I'll call my best friend Linda and be like, hey. Mm. I suck at this. Can you help me, please, please, please? <laughs> you know, like, and I'm okay with asking, and she's yeah. okay with helping. But it's, it's okay not to all ask for help, though. Absolutely, and I think is. I was so reluctant to asking for help mm-hmm. because I was raised in a place where it would always be held over me. I know, and I hate. And that. I don't like that. I don't like that. If I'm and asking there's... for help, this difference is asking for help and is asking for a favor. Mm-hmm. And if I ask you for help. Don't throw it back in my face like it's a fit. I cannot stand mm-hmm. that. And that is like, mm-hmm. on the, if on the t- if you want to piss me off to a hundred, yo, do some shit like that, mm-hmm. and you'll find out. Real and quick. there's been some people like in the scene that you know they've offered to help me. Mm-hmm. I take their help, and then if it doesn't go their way, then they throw that back in my face, and I'm just like, oh, just, oh, oh, you want to get spicy with yeah. me? All right, well, <laughs> let me let me run it back real quick, mm-hmm. you know. And I I just don't like that, mm-hmm. and. I'm very transparent. I feel like I'm very straightforward when it comes to stuff like that. Like, Mm -hmm. no, no, no. Like, you're not going to do that right now. Like, I can sense that you're pissed off. I can sense that you're stressed out. Let's revisit this because I don't want this instance to ruin our friendship and then also our business partnership. Yeah. You know, like, you have to be able to read 
that as well. Yeah. Um, but if you're doing it over and over and over and over and over and over again, asking for favors, then, mm -hmm. I mean, you probably should just start paying that person. Yeah, true. You know? Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. So, you know, moving forward, I guess we'll ask what's next. What's next for business? What's next for life? What's next for love? Oh. What's next for <laughs> traveling? You know, when are we going to see Linda in Europe? And Ooh, in, you, you know, know what? So I just moved. Um, I moved to a different part um, mm -hmm. in L.A. And mm -hmm. thank God I did because I'm saving so much more money. Yeah. Um, but I think this year I really want to focus on, I want to focus on the travel aspect of mm. the shows. I want to be able to like, when I go to Virginia beach this weekend, you mm. know, for a tuner Evo, I want to be able to indulge in a little bit of Virginia beach. Yeah. Right. And then next week we're in Rhode Island, which mm. I'm super, super excited yeah. to go back to. Um, it's a very sentimental show for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm really, really excited to yeah. go back and share why. Um, so every place I go to for the shows, I also want to try to dabble into like, what's the location yeah. about. Um, and then going into next year, I actually do want to start traveling overseas. Mm -hmm. Like I want to go to Brazil and stay with my family for a month and actually learn Portuguese. No, That'd be sure. nice. Like I want to mm -hmm. go to DR with my dad, mm -hmm. actually learn Spanish, mm -hmm. you know, like I want to be able to do these things yeah. and it's difficult to do that when I have all these shows all the merchandise that I have to worry about, the new designs, like getting the fulfillment, like all of the behind the scenes stuff that people don't see, mm -hmm. I'm doing it all by myself. Mm -hmm. So like, I can't travel and be free if mm -hmm. I'm doing all that other stuff, yeah, you. you know? And I want to do van life longer next yeah. year. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, oh sure. yeah, forget about it. As far as the love life, yeah, that can... Um... Oh man, what are you... <laughs> Yeah. We'll speak on it another Cute. time. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You got to be open to love a little bit. Yeah. A little bit open. Just a, uh -huh. a little bit. A little right. bit. You know? Oh, my gosh. Totally. <laughs> totally. But, um, so, <laughs> and I appreciate you coming by and I appreciate yeah. you stopping by and just, just kicking it with us and telling your story. I really wanted to, you know, you to come up here and, and just share what it's like on the other side of things because a lot of people just only see what's out there. And there's so much more to the person mm -hmm. than what you guys just see on Instagram or see on mm -hmm. YouTube and, you know, hear some of your stories, the ups and downs, mm -hmm. the, you know, and I, like I said, the parts that should have broke you, like how they break most people, but you really, you know, yeah. stick with it. And I'm really proud of you for thank that. Thank you. So, thank you for that. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. As, you know, so I generally ask two questions at the end of the pod. And the first being, what was your favorite year? And just modeling, traveling, working, living life. What was your favorite year? Ooh, okay. Um, I have a lot of different favorite years for different reasons. 2011 was my favorite year family-wise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I moved in with my brother, my Brother Ozzy came back from Iraq. My brother Nelson got married. Um, so 2011 was a really great year family-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think for me, personally and professionally, 2020. 2020? When I moved out to California mm -hmm. in uh, February of 2020, I had basically like a month and a half to network with like the goats of social media, if mm -hmm. you will. And then COVID hit. And I, I know that this is a very, very touchy subject, but for me, COVID was the best thing that happened to me mm -hmm. because I'm already a homebody because I'm so used to the snow. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, okay, you don't want me to leave my house? That's fine. Mm -hmm. And it really allowed me to not put all my eggs in the car show basket. Yeah. So then that way I could dive deeper into merchandise. I can dive deeper into TikTok. I can dive deeper into social media as a whole mm -hmm. um, and really work on branding myself. Okay. And I could FaceTime all of those goats, I guess you could say, that I met prior to COVID shutting, like shutting down. So for me, it was really, I was out of my comfort zone. I'm all by myself in California. Now COVID shut everything down, even some gas stations. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I really, my back is against the wall. I need to figure this out. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I need to ask some questions. I need to, hey, I know that you just met me, but like, what was your first impression of me? Oh, that's what you think of me? Great. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, you think I'm motivated? Yeah, okay. Well, now I have to be. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was such a pivotal year for me. Mm-hmm. And I know it was devastating to a lot of people. Yeah. You know, so that's why I feel, I do feel guilty saying mm-hmm. that. But then at the same time, it's like, it allowed me to just stop. Yeah. And look at the bigger picture. Which it did for a lot of people, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, whether through loss mm-hmm. or through gain, you know. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people to reflect at the end mm-hmm. of the day because it was a hard space. And I also wasn't collecting either. Mm-hmm. I wasn't collecting. I wasn't mm-hmm. working. Mm-hmm. Like I wasn't, I didn't work for someone, yeah. you know, to collect like unemployment. I wasn't mm-hmm. on unemployment. I got two checks. That's it. Over the course of however many years that was. Yeah. I didn't get paid for also going through COVID like mm-hmm. half of the world did. I didn't get paid. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it really, really made me like, okay, let's dive. Yeah. I have to dive. I that's, have to. That, that's a... Literally sink or swim. Yeah. That's, that's Literally. a level of grind that mm-hmm. needs to be respected. Mm-hmm. And speaking of respect, um, second question Ooh. and disclaimer, like I tell all you guys not to be morbid, but at the end of the day, with something that you want to be known and respected for by peers, friends, family members, um, people in the car scene, people not in the car scene, people who just know Linda. Uh Okay. Um, You know, it's always weird talking about yourself. (laughs) (laughs) I like low-key want to put like a mirror in front of me and be like, all right, girl. (laughs) Um, I think what I would like to be respected and remembered for would be just being transparent, being yeah. myself, um, and really reliable. I feel like I'm a very reliable person. If mm-hmm. I say I'm gonna do something, nine times out of 10 I'm gonna do it, unless I forget, mm-hmm. um, which I don't really forget certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, I always show up, I always bring the energy, I always am like really, trying to be there for my friends um, because suicide is very prominent in my world. So Mm -hmm. I'm very mindful of like mental health and just Mm -hmm. being accessible to people that need me. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I would really just say like reliable and transparent, you know, if they want to roll that into me being strong and being a great worker and all that stuff, and that's cool. But like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just really being a reliable person. Okay. That's probably my biggest thing. All right. Well, yeah. I can respect it. Yeah. And I appreciate you uh, so much for coming through. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I know, I know you're tired. You did a lot uh, of driving today. No, nah, it's cool. It's cool. You <laughs> so know, I it was you well for... worth it. It was well worth <laughs> thank it. Thank you. And shit, you came all the way from Cali to come out here, so I got nothing yeah. to say on that. So. You know, I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But um, where can they find you? Give them all the socials. Oh, this is and easy. shout outs and all that stuff. Oh, this is so easy. So, whatever your social media platform of choice is, I'm probably on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Linda Lucia. Perfect. Yeah. Simple and smooth. Very keeping it easy. All right. <laughs> well, till the next time, guys. Y'all know the vibe. Stay up, stay blessed. Peace. Take it from me. That's fine. Thank you.